Okay, thank you for introduction. And first of all, I'd like to thank the organizers for giving this opportunity. My name is Yu Hamada. I'm a PhD student at Kyoto University. Um, today, I'd like to talk about electric action three and uh, its superconductivity. And this talk is based on the collaboration with Abe-san and Yoshioka-san. Okay, let's get started. The action string is an interesting object appearing in uh, action physics. Uh, it is a global vortex string associated with the uh, breaking of the UN pitch green symmetry. And in most you know, uh, in most action models, the UN pitch green symmetry is broken by a non-zero vacuum expectation value of uh, complex scale. And uh, after the uh, symmetry breaking and the uh, action swing uh, appears like, like this. And the action swing can be a superconducting swing using ferromanic uh, thermals due to the uh, anomaly involved. And this fact was pointed out by these people. And of course, uh, the cosmological uh, consequences were uh, studied recently uh, by Dr. Tang and his collaborators. And in this case, the, uh, the electric, uh, electric current is carried by the ferromanic uh, zero mode traveling along the string. And the maximum amount of, uh, and there is a maximum value of the amount of the electric current, which is roughly given by the mass, bulk mass of the fermion. And this is roughly equal to the pitch queen scale for the case of the model. Okay, how about the DFSZ model? In the DFSZ model, the Higgs sector of the standard model is extended so that uh, there are two Higgs doublets denoted by H1 and H2 and one single complex scale S. And in the model, the U1 pitch queen charge fermions are the standard model fermions. So we have no heavy fermion in the model. So it seems that uh, the action strings in the DFS model uh, contain no significant supercurrent. So uh, someone might worry that we can't apply the studies in talks by Dr. Tarem and Dr. Alcler to the DFS model. But don't worry. <laughs> in this talk, we show that action strings in the DFS model can also contain large current without fermions. So we can apply their studies to the DFS model as well. Actually, the superconducting string can be realized also by using bosonic carrier other than the fermionic carriers. So let's consider a case that the U1 LMAG charged particles condense inside the cosmic string. Then U1 LMAG symmetry is broken inside the string and the string becomes a superconductor. So here is a, here is an example. Uh, let's consider this potential uh, consisting of the complex scale sigma and uh, other, another complex scale phi. And the phi provides a cosmic string like this uh, red, red line. And by this potential, um, the complex scale sigma acquires nozzle waves inside the string. So the U1 LMAG symmetry is broken inside the string, and the, the sigma particles can carry an electric current. And in this case, the maximum amount of the current is roughly given by this mass parameter in the scale potential. And uh, in the following, we use a similar mechanism for the DFSC model. Okay, before going to the detailed explanation, uh, let me introduce a scale potential in the DFSC model, which consists of three parts. One is VH, uh, 
uh, which is for the, uh, uh, the two Higgs doublets, and Vs is for the complex scalar S, and the um, V mix is the mixing terms, mixing potentials. And here we assume that these three scalar fields uh, acquire these nozzle waves. And the mixing terms is given by these expressions. In this work, we assume that the so-called uh, quotic uh, portal coupling. So of course we can consider the uh, the cubic uh, cubic portal coupling instead, but uh, the difference is not so not uh, irrelevant. And uh, due to this portal coupling, uh, we have to assign the U1 pitch queen charge as this table, where the tan tangent beta is the ratio of the uh, two Higgs waves. And uh, thanks to this charge assignment, there is no mixing between the action and the Z gauge boson. And please note that uh, we do not consider fermions in this talk. We just consider uh, only bosonic uh, fields in this, uh, in this talk. Let us, consider, let us first consider the conventional action string in the DFS model. So let's assume that the electric symmetry is not broken, but the, uh, the U1 pitch queen symmetry is spontaneously broken. Namely, uh, the temperature of the universe is much larger than the electric scale, but less than the U1 pitch queen scale. In this situation, the complex scalar S has a non-zero wave, but the Higgs doublets acquire no waves like this. So the action swing uh, consists of only this uh, complex, complex scale S. This is just the uh, conventional uh, action swing. Next, let's assume that the electric symmetry is also broken. Uh, namely, the temperature of the universe is less than the electric scale. Then the Higgs doublets also acquire non-zero waves. And as a result, the doublets must, uh, also the doublets must, must have winding phases. And these winding phases uh, contributes as a electroweak gauge fluxes around the action swing. This figure, uh, this figure shows our, uh, our statement. So first we, we start from the conventional action swing and then electroweak symmetry is broken and uh, and there arise the electric flux outside the uh, thin uh, string core region. So there is two uh, typical scales. One is the uh, U1 pitch scale, and it, uh, it, it's for the string core, and the, the other is electric scale, and this part is uh, much hotter than the string core. And we call this, uh, these types of the action string as an electric action string. And, the, and the, in the following, we show that there are three types of the electric action strings, depending on the winding patterns of the Higgs fields. They are type A, B, and C. And interestingly, the type C electric action string can be a superconducting string. Okay, we first consider the type A electric action string. Here, the S is the same as the conventional action swing, and, but the Higgs fields H1 and H2 also have winding phase, winding phases. And we can decom decompose these phases into two parts as follows. Here, recording that we have assigned the U1 pitch queen charges at this table, and uh, the blue parts means uh, the winding phases uh, for the U1 pitch queen symmetry. And the latter orange parts means the winding in the U1Z symmetry, which is a subgroup of the S to cross U1 gauge uh, electric gauge symmetry. So Z means uh, uh, 
the neutral at the gauge boson. And uh, here, so S, B, S beta or C beta means uh, sine beta or sine beta. And please note that you want Z winding, which are uh, which marked by orange lines, is needed to ensure the single variedness of the Higgs fields, unless tangent beta is unity. In fact, if I neglect these orange parts, the blue, uh, the blue part itself is fractional. I mean, S, S beta square itself is fractional in general. So this, so uh, if there is only this part, the Higgs double X is not single body. So we, so the latter orange parts are necessary. And due to the winding for the U and Z symmetry, and there must be the non-zero Z gauge field. And this field cancels the gradient energy from these windings. And as a result, and there arises a non-zero Z gauge flux outside the string, like this picture. And this V flux is fractionally quantized because uh, the cosine beta, uh, cosine two beta is fractional in general. So this is the type A uh, electro reduction string. Next is type B string, in which H2 has no winding phase like this. So S is the same as the previous case. And the H1 is also the same, but the H2 has no winding phases. And again, we can decompose these uh, windings into two parts. One uh, is for the U1 pitch queen symmetry, and uh, the latter orange, is, orange parts are the windings for the U1 Z uh, symmetry. But the winding number for the U1 Z, U1 Z symmetry are different from the uh, type, different from that in the type A string. And then, and the Z flux again appears around the string, but it's different from that in type A by one unit flux. Okay, the last one, which we call the type C string, uh, may seem more exotic. I mean, the S is the same as the previous cases, but H1 and H2 are uh, given by this uh, somehow and com complicated answers. Again, we can decompose this, uh, com this configuration into three winding parts. Blue ones are also uh, blue ones for the U1 pitch queen symmetry and uh, the orange ones for the U1 Z symmetry. And the third one are the, for the you want W1 uh, winding, which means that uh, W, uh, it's a direction, it, it's in the direction of the uh, W1 boson. Uh, I mean, the, it's, it's a sigma one rotation around the, around the vacuum. And the special property of this type C string is that this contains both the Z flux and the W1 flux around, around the string core. So there is one, uh, there is a thin core string, uh, thin string core, and there are both the Z and W flux like this. And the most important property of the type C string is that the U1 element symmetry is broken inside the string. To see that, uh, we, use, we use the Sumer answers for the uh, Higgs doublets, H1 and H2, where uh, so H1 and H2 smeared by uh, smear this, this singularity, oh, sorry. And the F, F and H are some regular function, regular profile functions. And their, uh, and their shapes are determined by solving the equation of motion. 
And this figure shows that the uh, shows the profiles for the F and H like this. And F e and uh, R is the distance from the string core. So this region is the outside of the string, and uh, this left left region is the uh, inside inside string. And F goes to the zero, but H does not. And let's act the U1 Elmac generator Q hat on the Higgs fields. Then we obtain the, this quantity F minus H. And outside the string, F minus H uh, approaches to zero. And then the U1 Elmac symmetry is not broken outside the string, but it is broken inside the string because, because of these uh, profiles. So the U1 Elmac symmetry is spontaneously broken inside the type C string, which means that the, the string can be a superconducting state. And in this case, the, the electric current carriers are the charge components of the Higgs fields and double bosons. And before going to see the superconductivity, uh, let me let me show that the type C string is not so exotic configuration. I mean, uh, to, to show that, uh, let's compare the string tensions of these three strings. This figure shows the string tensions between the type A, B, and type C strings. And we have taken some uh, benchmark parameters and uh, uh, we solved the equation of motion and we calculated the string tensions. And this figure shows that in some parameter range, the type C string can be the most stable string among the three strings, which means that the type C string is not exotic, but energetically favored in some parameter region. Uh, in some parameter region. And in that range, the action string, the action, the conventional action string necessarily becomes the type C string because it is energetically favored after the uh, electric symmetry breaking. Okay, so let's estimate the maximum value of the current this type C string, type C string can carry. To do so, we should note that extremely large current reduces this profile function H, HR. So we have so if this current has the very large current, the this profile function HR goes goes down to zero, and then the electric uh, electromagnetic uh, symmetry is destroyed, and the superconducting state is destroyed. This is also known as the current quenching, and the electric current becomes maximum when this quenching effect is balanced with the negative mass terms in the Higgs potential. As a result, we can show that the maximum value of the current is roughly given by the pitch point scale, which means that the type C string can carry sufficiently large current, which is comparable to the string tension. And this, provides an interesting implications on the interaction between the strings. Let's consider two parallel uh, superconducting string and they have uh, the supercurrent J max and these two strings feel an attractive force, an, an attractive force which is a magnetic interaction induced by the uh, electric current. On the other hand, the strings also feel this action induced interactions, which is a repulsive force like this. So this magnetic interaction is comparable to the action interaction. So this magnetic interaction could affect the time evolution of the string network. For example, uh, and the strings could form what, uh, the so-called white junctions, uh, which, uh, which is a bound state of strings. Okay, let me summarize my talk. 
Action swing in the DFS model seems to contain no significant current because of the absence of very heavy fermions. DFZ swing, DFZ action swing becomes dressed with electric gauge fluxes after the electric symmetry breaking, which we call the electric action swings. And the type C, type C swing breaks the U1 element symmetry inside the swing, uh, inside the swing and can be a superconducting string using the bosonic carriers. The maximum amount of the current is roughly equal to the uh, pitch queen scale, which is, which is comparable to the scale of the string tension. So we can apply the studies in talks by Dr. Terem and uh, Dr. Aquilea to the DFXD model as well. This is the message of my talk. Okay, that's all. Thank you very much.